Hi, welcome to Pharmacology of the Synapse. This week will be our second lecture covering some basics of pharmacokinetics. In this course figure, the lecture will highlight how drugs move through the organism and how drugs are metabolized. The basis of pharmacokinetics is the study of how drugs move through the body. Pharmacokinetics incorporates drug absorption, distribution through tissues, metabolism, and elimination. In this lecture, we will primarily focus on the differences in routes of administration. Given a single drug, the route of administration affects the dose, kinetics, and the distribution. In this graph, the same dose of drug injected intravenously will produce the highest plasma concentration the fastest. It also has the fastest descending limb of the dose curve. Intramuscular and subcutaneous injections are the next fastest with some of the reduced speed occurring because the drug needs to be absorbed into the peripheral circulation from the injection site. Notably, the oral route, such as taking oral medications, is the most common and ideal route of administration for drugs on the market. In animal research, the intraperitoneal route is the most commonly used, also called IP. One major common feature of oral and IP administration is first pass hepatic metabolism, which we'll talk about in the next slide. First pass metabolism occurs when drugs go through the hepatic circulation prior to entering the systemic circulation. Oral drugs are absorbed from the intestines and reach the liver through the hepatic portal vein. The liver then breaks down the drug using many different types of enzymes. The drug and its metabolites then enter the systemic circulation. If the target organ or system is not the liver or intestines, uh, if the target organ is the heart, for example, then the heart will see a lower concentration of drug than if the drug was injected directly into the systemic circulation. For example, an intravenous, intramuscular, or subcutaneous injection of drug would have avoided first-pass metabolism. The impact of first-pass hepatic metabolism on drugs affects the drug's bioavailability. For example, only 30% of nicotine survives first-pass metabolism into the systemic circulation, thus the bioavailability of nicotine is 30%. The body is composed of many different types of tissues, and these tissues are called compartments, each with different absorbances and absorbance orders. After injection, all drugs will enter the plasma compartment first and be circulated around the body. The plasma compartment is often referred to as the central compartment. From there, drugs will enter different compartments such as muscle and fat. Once drugs get into the muscle or fat compartments, they must exit back out into the plasma compartment before they are metabolized and eliminated. The fat compartment can act as a drug reservoir because it has poor circulation penetration. Drugs enter the fat compartment slowly, but also exit slowly. The blood-brain barrier is an additional barrier that drugs have to cross to get into the brain. Psychoactive drugs need to be transported across the blood-brain barrier to have an effect. An important concept in pharmacokinetics is the therapeutic window. This is defined as the minimum drug dose that produces a desired effect up to the maximal dose that does not produce adverse effects. Within this therapeutic window, there is often a sweet spot where the drug dose produces the peak desired therapeutic effect. All factors of pharmacokinetics, such as absorption, distribution, metabolism, and elimination feed into the characteristics of each drug's therapeutic window.